everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a coloring tutorial for you. I was asked on my DeviantArt if I could make one, so here it is. <laughs> I will be coloring the Fairy Queen from Tricks in the Fairy Queen by Alicia Contis. She is an amazing author and here on YouTube, so make sure and check her out. I've read three of her books so far from the Woodcutter series and I've done a whole bunch of fan art because I got bit by the Woodcutter series bug and I just, I caved, I had to do it. So you can see those on my DeviantArt, I'll link a link to it. And <clears throat> excuse me, this is the Fairy Queen. I have not read her book or Trickster yet, but I do have it ordered and I should be getting it soon. I cannot wait to read it. <laughs> and I actually just drew her to... I think two days ago yeah two days ago and this is what she looks like like I said I haven't read the book but I saw the book cover and that's what I based her picture off of so she's mostly kind of the dark colors well not dark per se besides her hair but duller colors which I forgot to grab those colors now I have them all. So she is the subject of my coloring video today. And for the skin, I decided to do this in real time just because I think it would be more effective learning my coloring style if it is in real time versus sped up and it just zooms right past you. So if you see my hand move and hear a weird noise, I have to move my mouse every so often or my computer shuts off and that's how I'm recording the audio. So that's why. <laughs> so to start, these are all my skin colors that I'm going to use for her. But to start, I use BB00 for the shadows and just kind of placing them where I think they should go. Under the nose, right here, under this, here, kind of shape it around there, and then right here. And that's all in shadow because it's underneath the hair. Okay, you can see everything. And about there. So that is the first layer that I do. And then I take E21, my darkest E that I use. And I just go, uh oh. I forgot. I forgot. Now I just go right over, right over the purple, not next to it or behind it or anything, just right on over it, and in some areas that don't have the purple. I blend quite a bit, but not too much to where it starts getting pixelated or kind of strange looking, and just fast movements and over stuff <laughs> like her eyebrow it's gonna be black anyways so I'm not too worried I was recording the audio for the princess garden I think part two and I was so into it I was talking which I don't normally do too much and I look over and the computer screen is black <laughs> it stopped recording and I was so sad 
So sad. I had to do it all over again. I think I recorded that narration about 20 times. Not exaggerating. About 20 times. <laughs> but it came out in the end, so... I guess that's all that matters. So next I'm going in with E00, which is my second to lightest color. Just trying to blend away these hard edges. And then instead of using my last skin color, I actually do the blush now, which is RO2. I'm just going to do some on her cheek right here. Shade it in. Not too much. I usually do the nose, but I think I'm going to try it without, because I did the other picture without blush on the nose, and it turned out pretty good. So to mix the RO2, I use R00, and kind of just blend it in as best I can. Final skin color. R Y that I can't read. Y R zero zero zero. <laughs> Too many things to do at once. I'm just kinda bring it all together. I don't really color over the dark parts with this one. Just kind of line and see the picture underneath this one. Okay, much better. So, alright. She has skin. Okay, so that's the skin. Like I said, these are the colors I used. Alright, and for her eyes, I'm just going to do two colors, because she has really, really bright eyes. So I'm going to use B02 for the dark part, and then B00 for the light part. And for this one, I'm actually going to do the lightest color first, because when you blend them together, they, they blend really well, <laughs> and so it's kind of hard to tell them apart. So, that's all for the eyes. Then for a shadow, using C3. I was so tempted to say C3 PO. And I ultimately did. But I resisted for a little bit. And that was just C1 to mix it. Blend it, sorry. Not mix it. Then... For her lips, R39 and R... I really can't read today. I'm sorry, guys. Let me try that again. R35 for the darkest and R32 for the lightest. <laughs> oh, it's just one of those days, guys. Just got back from school. My mind is all... Tired. I just can't do it. But here I am for you guys. So, I kind of just dump that up. Worry not. Okay, so there are her lips. Really easy shading. So, her bodice is actually purple, but the purples kind of blend in each other, and because of all the pattern on here, I don't want it to disappear. So to shade, I'm actually going to use C5 for just a little bit of this shading right here. And then I'll put the purple colors over it. Okay. 
So the purples I'm using, see if I can say it right, are V25 and V28. I did it! Hooray! Sorry, I just went door the explorer on you. I worked at a daycare for three years, so I know a lot of the children's theme songs. And my niece is at that age, so I'll be learning the current ones. <laughs> Pretty soon here. Alright. So, bodice is done. Covering up the gray, but not putting too much on there. Oh, I still need those. And then her necklace is also this purplish kind of color. the same three purples, so I'm not gonna say them all again. Move the mouse. Alright. And then for her necklace, throw in the Copics I still need. C5 and C3. So the C5 darkest, so that will be the shading, and then C3, Woo! will be the lighter. I think this, this is gray as well. lacy bits and her sleeve, which is kind of hidden. Uh, C3. And then Pro Markers, because they are the right color. It is PV202 <laughs> and PV48. I have a... F I mostly do... I mostly use Copics. But I do have a few Prismacolor. They're pretty good. I, mean, I don't have too many to where I can say they're better or worse. And I don't use them that often. But from the... I don't know, I think I have like 10 or something. From the 10 I have, I like them pretty good. and They're kind of similar in color for the Copic. So if I run out of the Copic, I can use that and you can't really tell the difference. But some of them are different, which is cool. Because I don't have those colors otherwise. Alright, now for all these glorious locks. 100 for the darkest. And then C9 and C7. So, to color all this hair, I'm going to split it into sections. So from, I don't know, here, all this over here, I'm going to quickly, but carefully, at least around the edges, color in very quickly, sporadically almost. Okay, just to lay that, that first color layer. And then, more carefully, I take the darkest color, so 100, and I start going in very carefully along the lines that I've placed in the hair, with all the twists and turns. Now these back layers will be darker than the front ones, that way you can tell the difference between them. So like on this one right here, there won't be as much black, but because these are in the background, use ah, her nose, her royal nose. I'll fix it. <laughs> I'm very nonchalant most of the time. About mistakes, they happen. No, it's just 
blend it out a little bit. And if all else fails, put some light gel pen highlight on it. <laughs> and fixed. So, here's kind of a front one, so not too much. Mostly the outside and some inside detail. Very careful around this. Move the mouse. And this one's more in the background, so it'll have more black. Right. Now being more careful than I was the first time. <laughs> Coloring around the face always makes me really nervous. Okay, whew, success. More black, a lot of black. All right, not as much black since, like I said, these are more towards the front. Hard to make those very fluid motions sometimes, but when you can, it makes it look smoother. All right, enough black. Now C9, and just coloring in parts of it all the way, and then highlighting and leaving some room for that last layer of C7. Start the camera over because it clicked at me. And this is really just a personal call on when to stop adding highlights and go back for that final layer. Just whenever you think it has enough. So adding that final layer kind of just brings it all in together and makes it smooth. Uh, and that's just wash, rinse, and repeat. <laughs> Do it all over. So this part I'm going to speed up, and then I'll I'll slow back down at the end.
Alrighty, so hair's all done. So now I'm just going to finish up on some details using C9 and 100 for her little headpiece thingy and her eyebrow. And the last step is highlights. So all I use is this Jelly Roll 08 Sakura. So I usually get mine at Michael's because that's the closest art store to me. Just, I usually for the face I place them on the eyes, the cheek where the blush is, and nose and lips. And she's got this that we need to make stand out from her hair since they're pretty much the same color. And then some quick highlights. And then just some she is a fairy queen, so add some sparkles. <laughs> Gotta have the sparkles. And just randomly placed, not too uniformed, but just here and there. Just a little bit on her shirt, her bodice, sorry. So here and there in the ruffles. I think that's about it. So there you go. That's how I color. Thanks for watching. And I'm back. <laughs> so while I was coloring, I was brought a package back. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I was waiting for Trickster. So, bum ba -da! Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. So this is the book. This is the first book of the Tricks Adventures. And these are the other books that she's written. Away. It's a little better. So, I read the first three. I haven't read Tales of Airland, is how it sounds in my head, so that's how I'm going to pronounce it. So, here's the author. Woo! Can't see it. Gotta turn it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, alright. And it's time for me to read. <laughs> Thanks for watching.